afternoon all. Reverend George Lewis, acting chairman of the Arden School Board. Ms. Nadine Malloy, principal, welcome. Mr. Gary Allen, CEO of the RGR Dean of Communications Group. Reverend Marius Samuels, Dean of Discipline. I'd like to also acknowledge other members of the RGR Gleana management team here, other distinguished invitees. Ardenites. Ardenites. I know the Dean of Discipline and Principal is here, you know, but we can hear you. Uh, I promise they won't give you any demerit points for acknowledging your school. So let's go again. Ardenites. There we go. Welcome. Good to have you all here for this important mentorship internship launch. Our Jardina group along with the Arden High School. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're about nation building. That's always been at the heart of many of our arch reach programs. And here at the RGR Galena Group, we have demonstrated that in very tangible ways over the decades. So I'd like to think of this as laying another brick in that solid foundation of nation building. So here we are to launch an important initiative as we seek to intervene, because really this is an intervention, a much needed one. So I'd like to laud the Arden community for recognizing where there is a breach and uh, to co-laud the RGR Galena group for stepping into that breach. It's always a good thing when partnerships work to a greater good. So to get us off to a proper start, I'd like to have Mrs. Mary Dick, our assistant group HR manager, come to invoke and inspire you. Mary? Let us pray. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Every day, new mercies we see. You have continued to provide for us. You have continued to protect us. We thank you, God, for the children that you have put in our care. And as a company, as we decide to launch this mentorship program, we pray, O oh God, that we'll be able to inculcate good values along with the principal and all others who are instrumental in the development of these children. And as we develop these, inculcate these values, O oh God, we pray that we will help to develop good attitudes and that these children will grow to become good citizens. We pray, oh God, that they will continue to be good blocks, building blocks for the society. And whatever we do and say here today may contribute to the building of this nation. And we give you thanks, oh God, for all that you have enabled us to do, as we say in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, uh, Mary. And now let's have an overview of what this is all about. Here to go a little further in is our CEO and Managing Director at the RGR Gleena Group, Mr. Gary Allen. Thanks, Derek. Principal Malloy, Acting Chairman Lewis, members, other members of the Arden family in administrative or academic capacities, members of the RGR Gleena team, and especially our human resource management um, department. Students, and did I leave out anybody? So I just say distinguished others. Parents. <laughs> Uh, well, if they are, well, they are parents as well. Yeah, we have some parents who are also um, staff members, and, and um, so we can cover a wide gamut. The pleasure is mine this afternoon to be here to see something that started as a, just a germ of an idea about one day in summer this year having some students visit uh, with us in the RJ Arena group, mushroom into something that is much bigger 
than what that germ was. And I remember when we had our first conversation, the Dean of Discipline um, said, could I ask you to do something? I um, hope it's not a problem. And the request was whether or not one day this summer we could have some students who were involved in a program at, at school during the summer period, if they could come and visit and have some of our staff interact with them to try and leave with them some ideas about what life is, can be, challenges that we will face and how we face those challenges and overcome. And so when, when um, Reverend Samuels had that conversation and I said, yeah, yeah, not a problem. I, at that point, had no idea uh, what it was about to open. Um, my subsequent conversation with the principal allowed me to understand that for a number of years, the school has tried different strategies to ensure that they get the best out of the students who come to Arden in different ways. There are some who are early bloomers and they get on with things very early in their school life. There are others who it happens midway and there are still others who have uh, delayed potential coming to reality after they have left school. And what, what one of the things that they try to do at school is to allow for the realization of the best potential of the students while they are in their care. They have a good chance of influencing positively most of the students. And there are students that they have to invite to participate in other activities, not because they can't or won't, but because they have to be inspired by different actions to realize that what is in them that is good and that is positive and that can shine a bright light in Jamaica sometimes lead, needs a little bit more encouragement to come forward. So I applaud the school, the principal, the staff members, the Dean of Discipline, Guidance Counselors, um, led by the directives given by the board for those kinds of um, thoughts that they have and initiatives that they come up with. I'm going to allow the principal to tell you in more detail about the activities that they are engaged in. But I thought that from our perspective, it was useful to indicate to you why we felt that we should commit. You know, when I thought about it, Teachers teach a lot of what is included in most of what is included, sometimes all of what is included in the curricula provided by the Ministry of Education. And they try to complete that and allow for the students to have a good grounding in terms of what has to be taught. But teachers and the staff in general, administrative and ancillary staff in general in schools do a lot more than that. Teachers help build character. They help mold personalities. They guide youngsters in ways that they don't often get elsewhere. And in fact, thinking about it, I realize that it is in the care of teachers that for the first 20 years of anyone's life, you spend most of your awake time. When you're sleeping, it don't matter because you don't know what's going on around you, you're sleeping. But if you think about it, when you wake up in the mornings and you get out of school, you're out of home and you're heading for school and you spend some time on the road, and in the reverse, when you're leaving school, spend some time on the road and then get back home, do some things and then get to bed to sleep, you would have, on average, we have about 16 hours that we are awake and we have eight hours, some people are a little bit more because they like to sleep, where they are not awake. In those 16 hours, you are spending the majority of that time in the care of your teachers. And so when parents look at their children and they see in them sometimes things that they never thought, it's because of the people who have care of them 
for the better part of the awake hours every day. And so we have to salute our teachers in that regard. <laughs> now, there is a difference that I like to acknowledge for myself between doing things incrementally and making slow, steady progress and when you transform. We like to talk about transformation. It's one of the buzzwords that come up from time to time. People say, oh, you know, I'm into transformation. I want to do something transformation. Or oh, we are doing these transformation activities. And some of the transformation activities people talk about are really just some transactions that move a little bit along the way. What is transformational are those things that have a big impact and it happens quickly. You make a leap forward. So the program that was introduced as an intervention one summer that has been repeated a few times and you spend some time talking and, and exchanging ideas, when that in a short space of time moves to an engagement with a private sector organization that is going to not only dedicate a few hours one day, but is actually going to say, look, let's bring the numbers of people that would make sense to achieve significant change in outlook and in conduct and in inspiration. Bring them and let's find the people who can work to try and inspire them in a short space of time. That's when you get to transformation, not the, not the small steps. And many people make small steps and don't realize that they can make a big leap. And I have to commend the principal and the dean of discipline in particular for recognizing that there are steps that had been taken, but there was an opportunity to make a big leap forward, to be transformational. And this studio that you are in is a studio that is, it has a lot of history in it. I was telling some people just this week that in this space here, which is called Studio One for RGR. It's the largest radio studio in the English-speaking Caribbean. It is a fully soundproof studio. The acoustics are impeccable, designed by the BBC, the side of the world. The walls are 18 inches thick at all four sides, and there is a solid roof, and of course, there is good grounding. And in this studio, two former prime ministers produced two of Jamaica's best known musicians, groups. Byron Lee and the Dragoneers, produced by Edward Siaga in this studio. And the Scatterlights, produced by Prime Minister PJ Patterson in this studio. So you're at a place where we are starting something that can deliver big. Whether it's going to be big musicians, or it's going to be big leaders, or it's going to be big managers, you are in a space where you can do something significant. So this is not transactional. It's not baby steps. This is to say to you that you're in a space where we are expecting that you can be transformational. Do things big and let people wonder, well, what happened there? I want to follow that because it looks so good. So I commend the efforts so far, and I look forward to the efforts that we are going to continue to make to work together, exposing students to different areas of what we do. I had a check this morning. We have more than 30 disciplines at work in our organization every day. Technicians, accountants, engineers, videographers, editors, um, script writers, presenters, HR practitioners, administrative assistants. We have over 30 different disciplines. We are saying to you, if you are interested in understanding those areas, so that it can help you make choices about where you want to go professionally, explore them with us and allow us to give you a sense of what could make you get your true potential out and make you as great as you can be. Final thing I want to say is to commend two particular people. Delia Harris is not with us today, but Derek Wilt is. When we had 
the group come a few months ago and I solicited feedback. Both Dahlia and Derek were the ones who said, there were good sessions, but I think we need to do more. And so on that basis of needing to do more, we set about deciding what more can we do. And it's in the DNA of the RGR Gleaner Group. The Gleaner for 185 years, the RGR for 69 years now in practice. It's in our DNA to rise to the challenge and, and make sure that we do as much as we can do in the best interest of Jamaica and Jamaicans. And that's what we are trying to do today. How long are we going to do it for? I can't answer that question, but I will end with giving you an example of how long we might be able to do this for. In this building, studio across there, in 1980, we reported on a fire that had led to the deaths of over 90 aged Jamaicans at the Eventide home. And there was an announcer on air named Carlington Sinclair, who that night when we reported on it, said, well, what can we do? And ordinary Jamaicans started to call in and pledge money, a little $50 here, $100 there. And then by daylight, corporate Jamaica got involved and was also pledging support. That led to a national drive and a fund, which led to the construction of one of the clusters, Cluster C, which has been in the Golden Age home, which was a replacement for the Eventide home, which was opened in 1983. Since 1983, that's 36 years ago, we were the first private sector group to be involved in the establishment of a cluster at the Eventide home. And for those 36 years, and Norma Brown Bell, who is our liaison and coordinator with the Golden Age Home, for 36 years, we have remained committed to what was started in the studio across the hall. So today, ask me how long we are going to do this, I don't know. But I know that we have done 36 years and counting in one project already. And if it is working in the way that we want, I might not be here, I wasn't here then, but 36 years can be used as a guide. Thank you. Right, so our then you've heard the magic number for cash pot later. 36. <laughs> All right. You know what they say, right? All talking and no music makes our then a dull school. So we're not dull, are we? No. I hear you have a fantastic choir. Is that true? Well, let's get them all together so they can sing.
That was great, wasn't it? Yeah. One more time for the audience. Yeah. Madam Principal, as you welcome Mrs. Nadine Malloy, please. Thank you very much, Derek. Gary Allen, Chair, uh, Managing Director of the RGR Group. Reverend George Lewis, our Chaplain and Vice Chairman of the Board, <coughs> members of the RGR Dean of Fraternity, my Arden Fraternity, and my lovely students that I love to call Starden Nights. Good afternoon. I am from country. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That sounds a little better. I want to start by sharing a little bit about Arden, for those who may not know. And it goes like this. Arden High School is home to about 2,000 students who come to us from parishes right across Jamaica, and quite a few nationalities as far away as Africa and as close as on any of our Caribbean neighbors. We offer what I like to call a comprehensive academic and co-curricular program, which we tailor and adjust as is necessary to suit the needs of our students and the emerging industries of the world of work. We are also very careful, and perhaps I should say deliberate, in creating an environment that caters to the whole, ch the whole child and as a spiritual being and the place they will take in the world as an adult. However, with the best of intentions, when there is the meeting of bright minds, yes, Ardenites are bright, creative, you saw an example a while ago, and sometimes troubled souls, there are gaps that we cannot fill with our daily routines. And as Gary mentioned, we have to go to the drawing board and plan and replan and replan. And hence, we're here today, in a way, celebrating while we're building on the summer intervention program that started in 2050, 2014. And I must commend our Dean, Reverend Mario Samuels. He's always coming up with something new something that challenges all of us. Sometimes I usually, I would say to him, Reverend Summers, what are you coming with now? <laughs> he came to me with this idea, and we sat down and we fleshed it out, and hence we started. Please put your hands together for us. <laughs> His specific intention at the time was to provide assistance to support those students who demonstrated the need to make significant changes to how they made choices that would affect their lifestyle, not only at school, but beyond, because we are concerned as we recognize that education is for the future, not necessarily for today. I then intended for this intervention to help the students maximize their potential as global citizens. The assessment of our formal guidance and counseling program identified issues of a general nature such as lack of exposure, self-esteem, negative peer pressure and time management skills, parental neglect and absenteeism amongst other things as critical elements that needed to be addressed. This initiative became a partnership between the school and the parents of the students involved. We also had members of the alumni board, we had members of the board, we had members of the Church of God in Jamaica, and just persons who we knew and could reach out to. Arden was also able and fortunate to bring on board professionals and corporate entities, such as the RGR Gleaner Group, to provide our students with some exposure beyond the world of Arden and home. Not all of them needed it, but some did. The first year yielded significant success as the majority of the students who participated showed dramatic changes in behavior. But of course, the following years, we recognized that we had to do some shifts because each year, the core changes and you have to find new ways of capturing their imagination. And so, fast forward to today, we were at RJR Glena Group this year, doing an outside trip rather than having persons coming to us. In 2019, we had also the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard hosting us. We also had the JCF hosting us. 
and those were all meaningful activities. And whilst, as Gary mentioned, those persons who interface with our students recognize that they would have a place if they joined us, we also recognize that it was quite beneficial to the students. So from the interactions with these persons from the three entities, we are pleased to arrive at this afternoon where we have had the RGR Greener Group extending an invitation to partner with us. Of course, you know I jumped at it. It's not just about having a summer program anymore. It's something that is going to last throughout the school year. For this, we are extremely grateful and we anticipate rewarding outcomes. Our students will not only be mentored by professionals, but will benefit from an internship that has the potential to revolutionize their thinking about future careers. And the buzzword, buzzword at Arden right now is the fourth industrial revolution. And our students are all pumped up about uh, artificial intelligence and robotics and the introduction of Chromebooks and interactive boards in our teaching and learning process. So we are really looking very futuristic <coughs> at how we do things at Arden. So something as minor in some instances and as major in some instances, as behavioral challenges, we will not allow it to hold us back. We are doing everything that we can do to have a positive impact on them so that they can make that impact in turn on the world. We at Arden see this as a big win-win for everyone involved. We embodied in this venture being launched, we see embodied in this venture being launched today our core values at Arden. And the chaplain will be very happy to hear me mention them. They are godliness, volunteerism, teamwork, respect, and honesty. We try our very best to in inculcate those values in our students every day. And as a matter of fact, we see them living it very often. Our students are involved in over 50 co-curricular activities, sporting and non-sporting, just yesterday, the star carried a feature on the aspiring medical professionals. Anyone here who donated $42,000 to the Cancer Society? They raised it and donated it. <laughs> There's another one called the, gentle, called the Gentleman's Club. I'm still trying to quite understand it, but I recognize that I'm female. <laughs> okay? And then there is the Crochet Club. And I like that one. I understand that at Howard School of Dentistry, the students are asked to learn to crochet to improve their dexterity. So as much as it seems very female, and I understand it very well, it's something that is a good skill that anyone can learn. And of course, there are the other well-known clubs that they are involved in. You see, our students are allowed to create their own activities. All they need to do is write a one-pager saying exactly what it is going to be what they hope to achieve from it, and how they are going to have managed to convince a staff member to be their chaperone. And once they have fulfilled all of those, we usually say yes. And it is quite an interesting environment to operate in when our students are able to self-actualize in that kind of a way. Of course, not to mention our prefect body that does so many things. They actually have an office, Gary. <laughs> the prefect body, yes, they have an office. And the student counselors were always stressing me out, but I enjoy having lunch with them and getting ideas from them as to how we can improve the school. So, something tells me that Vision 2030 is internalized in more of our psyche than we think. This is giving a set of deserving young people the opportunity to help make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business, and for people like Reverend Luce and myself, retire. <laughs> we started then with what we hope would be a few basic far-reaching rationales for establishing and perpetuating the program. We still find them relevant some five summers later. They are to promote positive and responsible student behavior, essential to creating a society that accentuates proper morals and values of the highest standard. To create a cadre of young people fit to live and to live with, to inculcating an attitude that models leadership and a sense of 
actualized purpose. They remain relevant and will continue to drive what we do. And so at this juncture, I'd like to thank the staff at Arden for supporting the Dean in this venture. I'd like to thank the parents who made sure that their young ones participated in the summer when they could have gone on to do more exciting things like go to foreign or spend time on the beach or be in the country climbing trees. We want to thank those persons who we cannot name now over the five years who have come in and participated, uh, you know, shared with them of their experiences and some of them have told me, some of the students have shared with me, how some of those presentations did impact their lives. We recognize that it is not, as I said before, only for today, it is for the future. And so I look forward to what that brings. On behalf of the Board of Management, I might want to say the Church of God in Jamaica too, I, and the staff at Arden, I cannot thank the RGR Gleaner Group enough for reaching out to this, us in this manner and for making today a reality. We are committed at Arden as Starter Night students to make it happen. Thank you so much for listening to me. The award winning Arden Drummers. <laughs>
see. You know, early Mr. Allen spoke about the acoustic qualities of this studio. You got a good taste of it just now. You heard the clarity of every tap of the finger on the skins. Every note was perfectly reverberated. Great place to be. All right, and uh, time now for a testimonial after that spirited performance. Let's invite uh, Alia Gordon, a student of Arden, to present. Alia. Good, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alia Gordon. I attend the Arden High School, and I'm currently in fifth form. I was a candidate of the intervention program for two consecutive years. My journey between those two years was quite difficult and it impacted my behavior negatively. Due to this, I was constantly getting into trouble, which resulted in an, an, an accumulation of suspensions. During this time, Arden was patient as well as persistent in ensuring that I was on the right path, but my, but my behavior contradicted their actions. After refusing to learn from my mistakes and my wrongs, I finally chose to heed the lessons and do what is right. This was after my last intervention in Gate 8, when a former Ardenite who got expelled because of his conduct and bad behavior was a speaker at the intervention program. That really inspired me to change and to become a better version of myself. I was deeply touched by his story as ex as his expulsion didn't cause him to lose hope, but instead he kept trying. Today, he's a successful lawyer in Jamaica. I thought to myself, if he could do it, then I surely could. I believe it is possible to accomplish all my dreams and aspirations. Also, Arda's motto has played a large role in my life, and that is, with God's guide, seek the best. I encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to take this motto seriously. Seeking the best not, does not include you getting into trouble. Students, I, heard, I urge you to heed the advice of your teachers. It is never too late for a change. Be the best version of you. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Alia. You know the beautiful thing about that uh, testimonial. With all the biblical injunction uh, taken from the Arden motto, God himself never judge you until after your eyes close. And Mrs. Muller, I'd for you to persist with her after hearing the testimony. Really heartwarming. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You've heard his name called and reference made to him over and, over and over again. Now, Reverend Samuels will tell us in his own words about his motivation. Mr. Masters of Ceremony, Derek Wilkes, Mr. Gary Allen, to my wonderful principal, Ms. Malloy, Chairman, our Acting Chairman, Reverend George Lewis, other distinguished guests, to my wonderful students, a pleasant afternoon. I am from the country as Miss Malloy, so I want a better afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Coming to Arden seven years ago, there was one thing on my mind, and that is to make an impact. How many lives will I be able to touch and transform? This had to be my mandate as I had an intimate understanding of my own past a past characterized by failures. There was a great light on the horizon as I interacted with persons who showed me a better path. The process was long, but eventually change happened. The opportunity to show others a better path was given to me in 2013 when Ms. Nadine Malloy employed me in the capacity as Dean of Discipline. And I want to say again, thanks to my principal who looked beyond 
my lack of experience and gave me a chance. In 2014, after observing and assessing, I brought a proposal to her about a summer intervention program. The purpose of this program was to effect change in a positive way. I wanted to impact lives. Ms. Malloy shaped the program and provided guidance on how it could be most impactful. For six years, every summer, we took approximately 45 students on a one-week journey to impact their lives. The model we used before 2000, 2019 was to have the presenters come to Arden and interact with the students. I informed Ms. Malloy that this year I wanted to do something different. Instead of having the presenters come to us, let us go to, to, go to them. RGR was one of the places that we visited. From that visit, a partnership was formed which resulted in us being here this afternoon. This afternoon, sorry. I want to use this platform to express my gratitude to RGR, to the RGR Gleaner Group for having this program extended beyond the summer. This was our hope to have the program sustained. The RGR Group has made this into a reality. And I want to pause at this time for all of us students, principal, vice chair, to give RGR Group of Companies a round of applause. I want to say that as a young man, growing up with the challenges that I had and getting an opportunity to make a change in others' life, I try to do my best to make this a reality. The RGI Gleaner Group has made this mandate a reality for us. Arden's motto, with God as guide, seek the best. The RGI Gleaner Group, one team, one group, one family, stronger together. With, with these two mandates combined, the inevitable will happen. Success, transformation, and impact. I thank you very much. <laughs>